Welcome everyone to episode 32 of the Brewhouse podcast, a podcast between two brothers where we talk about gaming, tech, entertainment, and everything in between. This week we're going to be giving our recap and review of The Mandalorian episode 4. If you haven't watched, we've done one of these for every episode so far, and we will continue to do them for every episode of this and The Witcher, and then we'll kind of sprinkle, sprinkle on some uh, some other stuff. But um, I'll just go ahead and say it. This might have been my least favorite episode so far. Really? Really? Yeah. It wasn't bad by any means. Just See, I, I liked it better than the first one. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was between this and the first one for my least favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, I, thought, I think they did some things really well in this episode. It's just... Mm-hmm. I don't know. It feels like we'll get into it later, but it feels like some of the character things are kind of rushed because they're trying to touch on a lot of different bases throughout the season. Yeah. So uh, this episode, you're introduced to Gina Carano's character. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I can't. I can't remember her name. Shock trooper. I can't remember oh, her name. Uh, I had it earlier. Um, Cara Dune. Yeah, Cara Dune. Yeah, That's she's right. she was an uh, she's an ex Republic shock trooper, uh, total badass, mm-hmm. and her in the so Mandal. She- she is a good character. Yeah, she's good. Like, she fought with the Rebel Alliance and all that. At first, I thought uh, they were referring to shock troopers from, like, Fallen Order that were, like, trained to fight Jedi. No. At first, I thought they were talking about that. But, yeah, she fought for the Rebel Alliance. And, yeah, she was a badass in this episode. I mean, she held her mm-hmm. own with the Mandalorian, who, as we said earlier, is by no means invincible, but is still a badass and still knows how to fight. Yep. Which, which is something we've we've praised how he's very vulnerable and he's, he's not yeah he's human he's very vulnerable and um that's a good thing you don't want your main character to be overpowered and correct not necessarily not be at risk because we know like he's not gonna die like halfway through the season you don't want a goku or someone that's automatically gonna get power up every episode yeah exactly or die and be brought back to life every time yeah so exactly. um but yeah, we get a new planet. I forget the name of it, um, but it was the first time we've seen it. First time we've seen all these planets that they've shown. They're all in the Outer Rim territories. Which is good. Um, we're not going to... I don't really want to do a walkthrough, but we can touch some I highlights. I don't want to either. I mean, so he's trying to escape from, you know, the guild and everything like that. Mm-hmm. He gets the planet, shows up with the baby. They find a settlement. I mean, at, well, at the beginning of the episode, you see this little village that's getting attacked by... I mean, Lord of the Rings characters, they look like orcs to mm-hmm. me. <laughs> I got immediate Lord Mercen- of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, mercenary kind of group. With a very yeah, so they're going like, yeah, they're going to uh, ransack their village, you know, get their crop, their uh, krill, krill, like K-R- yeah. K-R-I-L-L. It's mm-hmm. a little small bluefish. They're going, you know... Mini shrimps. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so they're going, uh, they're going to go ransack their village, take their crop and everything like that. And... You know, the, and then once the next morning they go, they see Mando's ship fly over. He goes goes to a little inn, I guess, or diner, almost looks like a bar, mm-hmm. you know, asking for some bone broth. Mm-hmm. Uh, another great meme happens right after a uh, him and Cara Dune fight. Oh, with the sip and the tea or the bone yeah, broth or whatever. Yeah, and a little Easter egg was the uh, the little cat thing that growled at Baby Yoda mm-hmm. was from uh, Rebels. That's right. If you remember, yeah, they were. Yep. That, I forget. Right. I, forget I recognized it from whatever. somewhere, but I yeah. didn't know. I couldn't place it. Uh, yeah. But no, it was a. Uh, it was a good episode. Realized, you know, well, I can't stay here. There's already someone else hiding out here. So you know, he goes to leave, and then he ventures a little bit farther. Well, he gets visited. Gets by, offered the job by the two people from the village to protect them. Goes go see him, and then realizes, oh, well, this is far enough. You know, away from even the main settlements of this planet or one of the main settlements that he could live here. Yeah. And I'm recapping anyway. So anyway, they need help. They're being attacked. Uh, he goes, offers the money to Cara Dune and, you know, split the profits. We can both live here. We can both stay here because it's far out of the way. We'll protect them. We'll come to find out that they do a little investigating and there's an ATST, mm-hmm. which for those of you who don't know, that's one of the big walkers, not the big, big walker, but the one with the two Jedi legs. Walkers. Yeah. Return of the Jedi walkers. The ones yeah. that walk through the forest. Now what they did with that. I love the red eyes. I love, I love the love red them. eyes. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, let me just say they end up defeating the walkers. They teach the the people how to fight. I don't understand the reason why the chick had, you know, experience with the blaster. They didn't explain that. I don't think they're going mm-hmm. to, because 
I mean, I don't think this planet will be revisited yeah. in the show. Which was one of my issues, which we'll get to after. But yeah, yeah. I, I liked the ATSD. Well, yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into that after this, after we guys finish up the short recap. Well, I mean, so they end up, uh, they end up finding a way to bring down the ATST with, you know, limited resources. Mando hands out some weapons that he has on his ship. Uh, they sink the ATST and they're blowing it up and, you know, pretty much give the villagers enough protection and enough training to protect them from any other further onslaught by these uh, Ravagers. Yeah. And then they were going to stay there, but a bounty hunter found them and they're like, oh shit, well, like, they're he still was, after He was going to leave he, Baby Yoda. Yeah, he was going to leave Baby Yoda, but come to find out that, you know, they... Um, What's the tracker? Is it a just a tracker? That, is that what it's like called? A, a tracking fob or something? Yeah, a tracking fob. So there's a fob given out on Baby Yoda to find him still. So Cara Dune realizes, well, ends up shooting him in the back of the head and says, oh, there's a tracker. So now he can't leave him. So they ended up leaving. Yeah. So one thing to touch on, which I said I kind of have a problem with, mm-hmm. is it feels like all these character interactions and kind of mini stories where he's mm-hmm. meeting all these different characters feel rushed. So, like, with with Cara Dune, are we going to see her again this season? Yes. Yeah, we will. I think we will, too. And she's definitely in the second season, whether it's in a flashback, if they do that. I don't know, because they're filming the second season. And Gina Carano I, posted pictures from the film. I, th- I think they developed her character enough to... So for her to stick around. Yes. I think the whole thing with uh, the chick from the village and her daughter was to, you know, develop Mando's character. Mm-hmm. You know, like, do you ever take that off? Why do you take that off? We, we get a little bit of more Mandalorian lore yeah. with, you know, he hasn't taken it off since he was a kid in front of somebody. If he can't, if he does take it off in somebody's face, he can't put it back on. Yeah. Which kind of, if you think of things and the whole in the Star Wars canon, that's the first time, this is the first actual Mandalorian that we've seen. Because in Clone Wars, they all they all took their helmets off, pretty much. So yep. they weren't actual Mandalorians. Boba right. Fett and Jango Fett were... I mean, Boba Fett was a clone of Jango. They both had their no, helmets off. Yeah, he was. I know, I'm just saying I ignore <laughs> the prequels. <laughs> oh, okay. So they, they obviously weren't Mandalorians, because you see Jango and Boba both out of their armor. Mm. Which even when he was in the little hiding out place for the Mandalorians, you saw children kids running around with helmets on right so this is that's something i didn't think of until this episode like this is the first actual time we've seen mandalorians you know if you've played i don't know if there was one in old republic one i don't remember in old republic two there was a mandalorian character and that was mm-hmm. pretty cool i don't remember do you go to mandalore in that game the planet yeah you do i thought so. you fight other mandalorians yeah but uh, cool. no, I think I think this this episode was done really well. A lot of practical effects again, mm-hmm. which I'm just going to keep harping on because it's good. Yeah, I love the practical, practical effects. And uh, I was listening to a review today. Um, uh, kind of funny he's doing their Star Wars review leading up to the next Star Wars movie. Uh-huh. And I skimmed through their review of The Last Jedi and they have a lot of same things. You know, it is it's not as bad watching the second time. Mm-hmm. It's still it is bad. But looking at it and that's what they kept saying, you know, it's probably the most beautiful star wars movie that and rogue one but it's also <laughs> due to the fact that it's all practical effects in the yeah. light colors and this one uh i want to say i told you but it's directed by bryce dallas howard yeah so i wish i think there was another female that might have directed last episode episode three i can't remember her name but yeah she was yes. the first she was the first director to do a live action star first. wars well, no, first female to direct anything Star Wars. Yeah, that's what I meant. But like yeah. live action, or it, yeah, it yeah. might even be for the animated stuff. I don't know. I don't. I don't think there was a. I don't think there's a female that was you mm-hmm. know the lead director on it. But I'm glad that they're bringing in different directors. But oh, I'm me also, too. I'm glad that it's a. Uh, it's different. I mean, it's the same writer. So it's John Favreau. That's pilot. That's and Dave. The show. And Dave Filoni is under yes. John Favreau. Who does he did? Did he do Rebels or Clone Wars? I think he did Clone Wars. He did Clone Wars, okay. um, but it, it's there. They have some similarities. So, I mean, with that, there's most TV shows. It's directed by different people. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, most TV shows nowadays, as far as like, you know, I know um, Gotham, Ben McKenzie directed some of them. Uh, yeah, the, like the actors will direct some episodes. The actors after once they get farther in, they'll take on some. They'll direct a couple episodes yeah. a season. So and yeah, they even did like, that for stuff like Arrow. Yeah, Arrow and Flash, yeah. uh, uh, Tom Cavanaugh is his name. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. the um, the professor or whatever and uh, mm-hmm. flash did it but uh no overall it was very good i'm glad obviously we all knew that baby yoda wouldn't stay on there yeah because we'll probably see him in every episode for at least this season and then depending yeah, on where the story he goes may, he may go somewhere at the end of this season like to get away because you know just go drop him off some random planet or realize get all the fobs and get the bounty off of him and may go drop him off somewhere and he may come back you know season three season four yeah which i that would be cool. Yeah. Get to a different storyline. Because obviously the focus for this storyline is Mando leaving the uh the bounty guild or trying to escape from it. Mm-hmm. And then uh Baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think will he'll ever name him or um or is it just always gonna be Baby Yoda? I think it will name him eventually. I think or kid. The I think th- yeah, the kid. I don't know. I mean at some point. They're going to have to relate him back to Yoda somehow. I think I hope they don't give a, like I hope they don't do a whole lot of lore on the race. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish that they don't give anything away because that just leaves that mystique like, oh, we don't know anything about him. It just leaves it there. I would be well, perfectly. Yeah, they that. could do they could do a subtle hint, not just straight name drop. Yoda. They could say this was the same race as one of the most powerful Jedi masters or something like that, yeah. or one of the most yeah. Like former most powerful Jedi Master, something like that. But then that. again, I'd I'd also be okay if they don't mention Jedi, if they don't mention the Force, they don't mention anything. Yeah, like that. yeah, we said that we want something different. We yeah. don't, you know, we we've enjoyed all like you know everything that's been done so far, but we want these shows to kind of go where the the universe hasn't really been in the canon right. yet. So we're in the outer rim, kind of the western feel with the Mandalorian, which we haven't would- experienced. I would be okay if he ran into like you know another hut or something like that. Yeah, like yeah. Or something. Not, not Jabba, but like you know another one. Well, Jabba's dead at this point. At this point. Yeah, I know. But mm-hmm. or like his his wife or something like that. Yeah. Something anything in relation to it, mm-hmm. but just like you know another hut or like you know the something like that. Yeah. So I mean, episode four. We are halfway through the first season already. Um, it's been I've it's very good, very you saw very the, good. Uh, the second season got bumped to 10 episodes. Oh, it did. I didn't see that. Yeah. And I'm assuming mm-hmm. that's next year around the same time. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing it is. I'm guessing that it's, I mean, they're filming it now. So by the time this gets out, because we don't have anything star Wars next year. Uh, that we know of, I think there's nothing, when, there's nothing uh, confirmed for next year. I think when's uh the Obi-Wan series. I think that's, that starts filming next year. I'm pretty sure like next okay. summer. So that'll be 2021. So if that's the case, it'll probably be, you know, season two of the Mandalorian Obi-Wan series will be the following year mm-hmm. and then maybe a movie or something. I don't I think, you know, Old Republic movie. That's Please. true. That might give enough time. Yeah, that or it'll be, you know, it'd be cool if now I don't know how much to think of ahead, but like maybe like the Mandalorian season three might tie into the older public movie well no because that's no it can yeah no idea. That, that's that's way in the past never mind but if they do something like another maybe a spinoff movie or something that takes place yeah. I, don't, I don't know like it would have to take place in between return of the jedi and force awakens mm-hmm. but they could maybe tie it in that way because we it's good and marvel's doing this too where the shows are going to tie into the universe and like we said we don't want we want them to be different but we still realize that it's all in the same it's all it's still all interconnected which is what, good what other storyline would you want to do if they did a spin-off movie like a solo like a star wars, a star wars story film um that's a very good question i don't know um what, what would you want empire. shadows of the empire so, give it to me okay so like immediately based on the bo- immediately based on after the revenge of the sith i thought that was in between new hope and empire no oh, it might have been yeah oh yeah, yeah. it was it was yeah, that's right. That's after New A New Hope and Empire. Now I want it based on the book. I don't want to. Obviously, the game's based on the the book. Mm-hmm. But like that's, I mean, they have the extended universe is there. Why not use it? That's one of the highly touted like best extended universe yeah. uh, stories. Yeah, so that that, they, old, that they, old Republic they, are probably yes they're up there. Yes. So if they like the old Republic is going to be a trilogy of or movies. Least, yeah, at least a trilogy of movies. If they would do, you know, another um, Star Wars story like uh, a la Rogue One and Solo, I wish it would be Shadows of the Empire. Because mm-hmm. it's not, it's not Kenobi. Because he's getting a TV show, which I prefer. If it's going to be shot in the same, you know, 
same way as this. Yeah, with all the practical stuff and mm -hmm. yeah, for and then you then you'll get your lightsaber. Yeah, for these characters that were kind of we didn't know the Mandalorian. We knew Mandalorians existed though. For Obi Wan, you know, I'd rather I'd rather more character development to see how he got from Revenge of the Sith, the end of Revenge of the Sith, to the beginning of A New Hope. Now, how? Well, I know we're getting off of the tangent, but I mean, we kind of uh, we covered all the episode, really. Yeah, we covered all the episode. We'll wrap it up. Do you want how much? How much stuff from the prequels do you want to carry over into the Kenobi series? Mm. I want. I don't want the story to to be directly from that. He's obviously going to have some kind of PTSD moments or something. So do you, so do you want Yoda to show up? No, I want Qui Gon to show up, which he, I mean, he definitely will. I think I think a Force goes. That's what that's the relation I was trying to get. Because I mean, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, uh, Yoda tells him that you know he needs to do training. I've contacted one of your old masters. Yeah, or your old master. So and that's how he learns to become a Force ghost. Yes. So yeah, I mean, I want. So I think that I think that would be cool. Yeah, I definitely want it to be tied in. Don't get me wrong, but I don't want them to. As I mean, as we said, we want it to be separate. Separate but joined together, if that makes sense. We want it to I be different it, from anything we've seen. I hope it's nothing like, oh, I'm going to be on tattooing protecting Kid Luke. Oh, that would be annoying. Yeah, that would be horrible. I want it I don't to. Want anything like I that. want it to like, maybe even end at that point, where he's want where it, he's on tattooing, yes, and that's the end. Yes, of, that's I would, the end. I would of the be series. happy with that. He goes and becomes a hermit, and you know, stays mm -hmm. and decides. Okay, I'm gonna go stay on Tatooine and watch over. Luke. It's it's okay for him to be like. I don't want to say necessarily checking on him, but like checking in on him, maybe you know, kind of yeah, having random encounters with him, like oh, you mean old Ben? Yeah, yeah. like you know, he's met, he's run into him before. No, we don't need to see any of that. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, I want it to be. I don't want it to be on Luke. I want it to be on Obi Wan. Right. And but. I think most people would agree with that because, I mean, it seems Obi Wan is one of the most liked characters in all of star wars i mean he was the best part of the prequels yeah and so. that's a bad thing like uh ewan mcgregor's acting wasn't even that good but he good to it was so good yeah. yeah yeah that's true him, him, him and sam jackson are probably the best mm -hmm. i agree well and uh uh ian mcdermott or whatever who plays the yeah. chancellor he did great too yeah. so yeah i mean uh, the prequels for all the crap they did a lot of it was the writing and the George Lucas, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. He tried to do he tried to do too much. Which yeah, he, he had what too she much said. control yeah. and everything. But what she said. What uh I wanted to ask yeah. I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about no uh previews? No previews for oh for the next I like it. Yeah, for like that. Yeah, I do too. I like it. Because sometimes previews and this isn't a negative thing, if the show is very linear and mm -hmm. the story is progressing kind of how it is if they showed a preview it might give away too much i think in i think in this type of show with how we've been seeing the episodes it would give away you know too much yeah i mean the episodes are already you know this one was the longest one at right at 40 minutes i think but yeah you know the episodes are already you know thir between 30 and 40 minutes that you don't need to give away too much now yeah. if there are you know a solid like hour like you know game of thrones style yeah then you can mm -hmm. do maybe 20 seconds of and we got previews. we got two long trailers that showed scenes from throughout the exactly. season before the show exactly. even came out so no i'm fine with it um again i'm kind of hoping the episode lengths are not a major concern for me i wish i mean of course i wish they were longer but i also don't want them to be too long no but uh like we said they're kind of probably kind of testing the waters in season one with how it, long it the episodes need to be and it wouldn't surprise me if like the last two episodes is like a part one, part two type episode. Yeah, with like through. a cliffhanger halfway through or something. Yeah. So uh, we still have yet to see Giancarlo Esposito's character, who's like a, mm -hmm. he was like, I guess, a, an empire, a general from the empire or something. We right. have yet to see Bill Burr, <laughs> his bounty hunter character. I feel like we might see him next episode. I think he'll probably come in at the end. Of the, if, if what I, uh, I remember, I want to say... I might have read like episode description of like the last one or something mm -hmm. like that. Just like a little one sentence. Now this could be for next season. I'm not sure, but I want to say there's like a bounty hunter or something like that that comes in at the end of this season. So, I mean, that could be IGA 11, IGA 11 or, mm -hmm. or, or Bill Burr's character. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Cause I mean, I just think that cause you know, the bounty hunters are after him. We saw 
one at the end of this episode so that maybe this whole episode will be you know him versus another bounty hunter i don't mm-hmm. know we'll see um but yeah guys that about wraps it up um again really good episode me saying that it was one of my least favorites it's still really good the show is amazing if you haven't watched it yet i don't know why the hell you're watching this podcast but uh yeah you need to if you if you're watching it let us know how you're enjoying it let us know what you want to see from it also let us know what uh what movie or spinoff series you would like to see in the star wars universe i mean they can they can pull they can pull so much from Mm -hmm. uh you know they've shown that they're not afraid to make stuff canon like they may they're make they're start slowly starting to make all the older public stuff canon or at least the major yeah. stuff like they made Korriban canon they made uh Re- whoever Revan's master was canon I think they made Revan canon they might yeah. not have done that yet but they're slowly but surely doing that so let us know if I mean we've we've each read some of the books oh I'd love to see a Darth Bane movie that'd be cool. that'd be another good one yeah yeah with the introduction of the rule of two and everything but anyways guys that's gonna do it for our episode four recap like we said we do these for every episode uh the witcher starts in 15 days from recording this is it confirmed that that's coming out once a week or is it dropped all at once i have not looked i watched the first big trailer and that's all i've, I've watched okay. of it okay well uh, wait i'm for it. i'm really hoping it's once a week yeah. If it's once a week, cool. we'll do recap episodes. If it's the oh, entire you, thing dropped at once. No, I don't think they're going to do it on something that, that size, that yeah, budget. I didn't think people, so. No, no. So let's plan on doing a review per episode. But if they drop it all at once, we're just going to do a series review and make it one big yeah, episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably, you know, wait like a week or two and yeah. then do maybe watch like the first couple of episodes and then, you know, give a non spoiler review, like what we're liking of the season, yeah. and then wait like another week or two and then give a full, like, season recap yeah exactly so anyways guys if you're listening whatever platform you're listening on please be sure to follow leave a like or a thumbs up and we will be back next episodes are going to be episode five review of course and we still need to slide in our top five star wars games each which we will probably record both of those at one time so be on the lookout for both of those make sure to be sure to follow whatever platform you're on and until next time guys keep gaming keep gaming and we will see y'all later peace